good afternoon, guys. We are back for a new show because, you know, there's not enough of those. Right. So, uh, we're here today. We're going to start a game show, but not like a game show you play on. I would I would participate in a game show. I mean, show. yes, that would be fun. Um, we are we're starting a, a new game focused uh podcast video form whatever i don't know words um we're gonna adopt the idea of the main geek tavern movie side of the podcast we're gonna adapt the um we're not gonna rotate individually i don't think we're gonna we're just gonna argue about it at the end of the show yeah okay (laughs) um we're gonna collectively pick a game and talk about it from Game Pass specifically. Yep. Because we've all bought in and got this bad boy right here, the Xbox Series X. Um, nobody, nobody's gotten the Series S because they're we're all smart. So I'm, I'm well, okay. <laughs> Let's just dive right into that. Okay. Uh, so I have, my wife doesn't know this, so this is probably news to the entire world, but I've considered getting it. <laughs> Because right now I have, um, no, just for another room in the house. That's what I mean. Like, so right now I have, um, I'm paying 15 bucks a month for my Game Pass subscription. Right. Why not throw 10 more bucks on there and go the all access route and get a second Xbox? I mean, sure. granted. Can I interrupt you right there, brother? Yeah, let's hear it. Um, you might want to grab your pillow, grab your blanket, maybe even a sheet because right once you do that, I'm afraid you're going to be sleeping out on the couch. That's probably the truth. <laughs> that is probably but, the truth. But as he was saying, if he gets in on the all access, he's already paying the fifteen dollars. Exactly. It would only be ten more dollars a month to Which get is another. System. Insane. And uh, one of the one of the crazy things that um, that I think is going to uh, shed more light within the next year as games come out for just these next gen consoles Mm -hmm. the the playstation 5 currently with the backwards compatibility titles is 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 a lot closer in power to the series s than people want to admit Mm -hmm. which you know say what you will i'm probably just an xbox fanboy (laughs) but um truth be told it's it's hitting 1440p 60 frames per second and that's close to what ps5 is hitting Mm -hmm. ps5 is a little stronger (laughs) i'll give it credit where credit's due there but um i you know maybe this gen will we'll see we'll see yeah but uh so yeah uh but yeah the game pass yeah game pass so we're gonna we're gonna uh focus our games into ones that are coming to game pass there are so many um that are um, like day and date release, uh, day one mm-hmm. into Game Pass, um, and I think that it's going to be uh, the best deal for for our wallets in general. Yeah, right. And this past week has been so telling of what is to come out of Game Pass, and it's only going to get stronger. Mm-hmm. Right. So. It has been an absolutely crazy week for Xbox. And, you know, from everything from the Bethesda acquisition to EA Play finally coming to PC, like, there were 20 new games added to Game Pass this week. Bud, do you want to touch on any of those specifically? Maybe read off the list? Off of the Bethesda list? Yeah. Yeah, um... uh, Let me just say, uh, I mean... Bethesda is, for me, one of uh, the reasons why I even bought into Game Pass. It's probably uh, one of my favorite game developers, uh, game publishers. Um, So to hear the rumblings and then whenever they came out and they blatantly said that, hey, the acquisition is happening, um, this was just one more reason on why to get into Game Pass. But yeah, let's get into it. Um, Dishonor and Dishonor 2, uh, I feel like they're both great titles. I think those right there are, you know, um, you know, a bang for your buck. Uh, as someone who's played Dishonor, the first one, multiple times, it's a game that still lives up to today. Dishonor 2 is a game that I'm just delving in, and I'm not going to lie. It's uh, one of those games that has uh, irritated me a little bit because I haven't died 
um, this many times in a game in a while. Hmm. Uh, you've got your Dooms. You've got your Doom 1, your Doom 2, which, uh, I mean, those going back, um, I mean, those are retro games. They're going to hmm. hold up as they are. You know what to expect. I played uh, I played uh, Doom 1 and <clears throat> Doom 64, and I'm just, because I had never played those, and I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm out on old Doom. <laughs> Doom 2016 and newer, that's where it's at. I mean, Doom... I can play Doom 64. Like, I don't know what it is about me specifically. And I'm not going to argue that. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But I actually bought um, Doom 64 on the Switch Mm -hmm. when it came out. Um, And it just feels great to play it on there. Really? Like, it doesn't bother me that I can't aim up and down. Okay. Like, you just aim towards it and it shoots it. Yeah. I mean, I had to train my brain to to understand that mm-hmm. but i i really have a uh an admiration for those games mm-hmm. um yeah in that same vein i also bought um uh duke nukem okay uh basically the same setup the same you know? deal right yeah. before <laughs> fps has had those yeah. major uh advancements like aiming down sights and the off center so i kind of and stuff like with that. doom 64 i kind of went down that specific rabbit hole mm-hmm. and like i just have the appreciation for those games nice. You keep going, but yeah, uh, you got Doom Three, uh, which of course was more peered into more of like the adventure horror survival uh, survival gameplay. Yeah, so more survival. Um, a must play was, uh, in my in my book. I'll give Doom yeah. Three a try. Yeah. I'll, I'll give that a genuine yeah. try. Xbox original, right there. Um, you've got your Doom Eternal, mm-hmm. so a more modern uh, game that people are finding, you know. Uh, fantastic. Long Has my heart. Numbers. Still gonna beat it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, Fallout New Vegas. I never played it. Uh, people liked it. I understand that back in the day it was very, <laughs> very buggy. Um, PC is was... very, very buggy. Console runs like a dream. Yeah, but yeah, there's bugs, PC so. literally still to this day doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's Fallout. noticeably absent from yeah. the Game Pass PC list. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this next one, Fallout 4, I'm so happy um, because it's going to be a game where, um, I mean, we're going to have our big plethora library of Game Pass and what we're going to do with that, everybody, um, in terms of playing certain games monthly and giving that a review. Uh, but this is going to be a game that I definitely fall back on. Uh, Fallout 76, uh, Steel Dawn, <coughs> right there they're giving you the latest package of the dlc that's out and this is a game that of course hindered on the the typical bethesda a few bugs here and there um it was something that it came out not to the not like the disaster that we've seen with cd project red and cyberpunk but it was a game that it came out they said you know what it wasn't completely finished but trust us we're going to uphold to it we're going to make sure that this game delivers. And from what I understand, that game delivers. So to see that in the 20th I've heard. year is awesome. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Prey, uh, I, that's going to be a game, a single-player game, that I hear a lot of people missed. Like, a lot of people didn't uh, um, have it on their radar. I know. But... And par- part of the reason of that, and I'm, I'm jumping forward a little bit, but... Part of the reason for Prey being something people missed was because it was so limited on console because it ran <clears throat> at 30 FPS <throat> and it wasn't initially optimized for the Xbox One X. And this was right around the time period that they had come out with that <clears throat> console. So it wasn't originally optimized. And now it was now looking back, it has been optimized for 4k resolution uh on the one x and the series x which plays those versions of the games Hmm. and it's one of those one of the five titles we'll touch on that has fps boost so it goes from 30 frames up to 60 without any additional changes to the code but anyway i think i might Uh touch on that one as well because it plays very bioshock-esque yeah, that's what I heard. I heard you get like a Bioshock esque. Uh, you kind of get a Alien Isolation, a more recent game than Prey, but you get that kind of vibe off of it as well. Uh, you get Rage Two. 
Uh, you mm -hmm. also get a huge Elder Scroll package. So you're getting your Morrowind, you're getting your Oblivion, you're getting Skyrim, and mm -hmm. you're getting Elder Scrolls online. And um, I honestly don't see myself playing any of the previous ones, not even Skyrim, because this is a guy <laughs> who at least bought four copies of Skyrim. But now you don't have to specifically buy this one. Yeah, right. You yeah. don't have to buy this one. <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong here, you got Skyrim for the N Nintendo Switch, didn't you? I did. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> if they put it on an Amazon Alexa, you would play that guy. <laughs> Dude, who who knows what else they're gonna put that on, man? Yeah, it's coming. Um, Smart TVs evil. are next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Xbox Co coming streaming to, app coming right. to the Connect next season. There it is. Right. The Connect, they're bringing it back. <laughs> um, Package with every evil console. Within, um, which I'm kind of disappointed on this. Uh, not that the Evil Within uh, isn't a good game, because it is a good game in terms of survival horror. Um, made by uh, the, the same guy who um, the name I'm such a big Resident Evil fan but I can't even his name is at the tip of my teeth and I can't <laughs> remember it but this guy made the evil within and uh, it's a good game it's a really good game but the second one is so much better and it hurts that it's not on this list then we go into a uh, Wolfenstein pack. So you got your Wolfenstein, the New Order, Old Blood, and Wolfenstein. What's that? Young Blood. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So this one is where I'm going to jump in because, uh, as much as I love Doom and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, and Fallout, right? Um, I have a love for Wolfenstein, thanks to the guy on the other side of this horn here. Um, but I don't know if you remember, you let me borrow uh, Wolfenstein New Order uh, back in the day on PS4. And uh, I've been a fan ever since. But yep. where the hell is number two? So, yeah, right. okay. So this is, I didn't this research is a this theory. Show, I don't I, I, this is baseless <clears throat> speculation and just Shill's opinion. So I have no, uh, <laughs> I have no real evidence for this. Just a uh, hunch. You... A new skit on the show. Shill's opinion. Shill's opinion. <laughs> so, I think that the few games that are missing here... Fallout 3. Fallout 3. Um, the original Doom 2016. Oh, yeah. Um, the Wolfenstein game that you're referencing. Yep. I think those games are very likely contracted or uh coming to google stadia <clears throat> and because of those contractual obligations i bet google has something in there that says you can't stream this game mm. anywhere else so xbox <clears throat> is honoring all those contractual obligations and those games will eventually come when those obligations are finished but the reason they're not here now is because Microsoft has been very adamant that if it is on console Game Pass, you can stream it to your phone. Right. So they won't add it to console. Hmm. So that's what I'm curious. I, like that's just that'd be a hunch. weird selection of games, though. Right. I, I, I Doom 2016 is on Stadia. Yeah, I know that for sure. Um. And and Wolfenstein Youngblood might be, but obviously that would have been taken care of a long time ago. But... Right day one kind of thing i could be wrong about that i don't even know if it is on there but right. um but what what a weird selection of games if that is true yeah uh like fallout 3 like fallout 76 and yep. and um fallout 4 aren't even on stadia right so if they were to bring that it'd be weird that's true i didn't even think about uh, that but anyway not a bad theory for sure yeah uh there's some kind of contractual obligation yeah my, my estimation is. yeah Somewhere. It Some, might not even be Stadia rel yep. uh, specifically. Yep. Um, they're definitely tied up in some kind of legality somewhere. So, um, it's an extensive list. And it's an impressive list of games mm -hmm. that are coming to... Uh, well, that are already live in Game Pass, right? right? Like, they were live last week sometime. Um, one of the cool things that they also followed up with, with these releases, uh, briefly touched on... 
um, FPS boost. Mm -hmm. An incredible technology that happens on the Series X uh, and the S mm -hmm. um, that can take these, na these games that are in backwards compatibility mode and just somehow naturally double the frame rate um, and make your games run even smoother <laughs> without like speeding up the gameplay or some weird trick yeah. that, that's happening. They're not altering the games in any way. <laughs> um, it's just a really, really neat thing to see. And the games that are getting that are the, uh, well, that already have it, are the original Dishonored, okay. um, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. So 60 FPS, 4K Skyrim, wow. bud. Wow. <laughs> I might have so, to pop that I'll sucker back in. Again. <laughs> <laughs> 60 FPS 4K Fallout 4. Okay, I wasn't going to play that, but now I have to see it. 60 FPS 4K Prey. And I'm not sure if Fallout 76 is, is 4K enhanced or not. But those are the games that it's are on getting... It's the list, whatever it's listed. It's right the there. FPS boost. It's getting the FPS boost, but okay. I don't know if it's... You don't know if it's if, 4K. If it was Xbox One X optimized for 4K. Probably not. So those are that's the reason some of those are in 4K. Like Dishonored, okay. Dishonored's still running at um, 1080p from the Xbox One version, so even on the Series X, it still hits 1080p. Well, and that was a 360 game, wasn't it? Or was it that... might have been. I might be misremembering that. It I don't might know. have. It might be both. Yeah, I, right. I was it might thinking have been it was cross-gen yeah. cross release. Um, but the version that's running in Game Pass is. The I feel Xbox like I can remember version. seeing the the game case with the. 360. I feel like that's where I played it. Yeah. Right, because I played the first one. I think I played it on 360. Um, Still to this day, the one day we turned when Tiff had her own Xbox, we turned her her system on, and it started downloading Dishonored Two. We didn't buy it. Yeah. It was just there. Didn't play it because I hadn't ever played the first one. Yeah, that's crazy. Got that game for free somehow. <laughs> that's really crazy. Um, so those games are uh, getting the FPS boost, and I sincerely hope that um, there are going to be some more titles that end up getting that. Uh, I could see some really neat stuff um, from the Bethesda lineup, right? Like Fallout yeah. 3 comes in with 60 FPS. That'd be crazy. I don't know if it'll do that. 60 FPS running just like it did on PCs back in the day. <laughs> like, that would be absolutely crazy. Yeah. So, but with all of that amazing Bethesda news, Xbox just announces more stuff throughout the week, right? So, we now know that the hit demo Outriders is coming to Game Pass on day one. Are you guys going to play this game? Uh, I'll go first. Um, I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, Why wouldn't you try anything that you can? Well, I didn't, I didn't mean that in like a... Uh, it was just me being like, I guess I should answer the question first. Yes, I'm going to play it. Um, I have a, a buddy at work who Bud knows. Um, I don't know if he knows that he knows, but he knows. Um, Ricky. Anyway. He was telling me about this game mm -hmm. and got me really hyped on it. He's like, there's a free demo. This was before we knew get the Game Pass part. Right. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I'll look into it. We were looking specifically on PC. But uh, and I, was, I found out that it was coming to Xbox and whatever. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yes, really excited for this. I, I don't know much about the gameplay or what it even really is. So all I know, all I know is that it's a looter shooter. Uh, RPG elements, and that um, you get like superpowers. Okay. Right, like kind of Destiny esque. Yeah. Right. Third um, person, right? Yes, third person. Um, That'll be a, a a a mountain for me to climb because I I'm very picky on my third person. Yeah. If they're not like adventure games, like it's not too bad. Like the game. Right. I don't about I don't like third person. So I played it. I, I played the demo. Um, I downloaded it. Um, I don't have my powers yet, so that tells you kind of how far I am into the actual demo. Yeah. But, um, so I think I've done, I've completed maybe two missions. Um, and it's not too bad. Uh, I've got a couple weapon drops that are all right. Um, I imagine that they're going to get pretty creative, mm -hmm. um, as we travel down the line. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'll give it a whirl. I'll play it with you guys. It, it's yeah. got cross play, so like our friends who are going to play it. 
on other consoles, we can hop in and play it with them. Um, I think it's going to be one of those games that people are really going to enjoy, and yeah. it's just a nice little uh, luxury that we don't have to pay anything above our Game Pass subscription to play it. Yeah. But are you going to give Outriders a whirl? Yeah, this is particularly one of those games um, that I was just looking forward to to play on the Xbox Series X uh, when it was first announced. Um, again, it's a looter shooter. Uh, it's Looter shooters are typically not a game, and you guys would know this. Um, I mean, I just recently, as of today, just started getting into Destiny 2, and after mm-hmm. picking the Hunter class, I actually felt good about the game and more willing to actually play the game i'm actually interested in it um but hopping back onto this this is a game that i um i was just interested in right from the very get-go i mean you're, you're looking at veteran um you know shooter uh a shooter developers that being people who can fly um, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking nice. forward to you know experimenting with the different classes. Again, this kind of like brings in a little bit of a different vibe, of course, besides story than Destiny 2. And you know you're looking at the trickster, the pyromancer, um, the uh, the earth bending mm-hmm. class, and then you're looking at the technical long range. Um, uh, I, I don't know. You you make machines just. Uh, materialize out of thin air. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking, uh, from what I understand and what people are saying on the demo itself, I haven't even tried the demo. I probably won't even start playing this game until it comes out, but from what Twitter is saying, a lot demo of progress carries over. Enjoying the grinding on this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's that's one of the things, right? It's, um, it's a looter shooter. It's very much like Borderlands, right? Um, that's one of the things, especially from the Destiny community that I've seen on Twitter uh, talking about this game, because I'm your resident Destiny 2 expert. Mm-hmm. Um, they're saying, a, lo- a lot of people are saying that it's um, it's similar, but it's also got a finite end, right? There's only so much grind you can get to, yeah. Um, which is, is, is refreshing. And Destiny's taken some strides to, to get better about that in the past year or so. Um, but I, it's... It's definitely refreshing to see a game come out that has a good narrative direction. Um, it's been the developers have said this is not going to be a games as a service, ever evolving experience. This is going to be like a one and done, um, and that's that's also refreshing, right? Because there's so much stuff out there that just goes that games as a service route to try to, you know, to try to continue to grow a player base and keep their game going for as long as they can. Mm-hmm. Um, so the there's not even like a confirmed DLC timeline for Outriders. I'm sure it will come. Yeah. But it's not something that they've publicly talked about at all. Hmm. So, um, but along with Outriders, there are a lot of other games coming to, uh, to, to, to Game Pass, um, cloud console and PC. Um, Mike, do you want to take us through some of the, some of those other games? Oh, I'll take you through because uh, I, I haven't seen this until you pulled it up okay. a few minutes ago and I've been holding in my excitement so uh obviously outriders we're gonna get uh undertale on console i think it was on the no maybe not was on the pc one already i yes. don't think so Cause, yes because I've, I've had it installed before okay okay so it's been on pc but it's okay. kind of the console um yakuza I, what is that beside it six, six? yeah yakuza um, six. i mean cool the, the other five are on there already, right? right? Yeah. yeah, I think that Xbox is really trying to get all of the Yakuza. I think this might complete it, yeah, actually. I don't know. And, like, all the Yakuza games are in. They're, they're desperately trying to get into that Japanese market. They want it. Like, they want yeah. to buy Xbox. Yeah, there's not a lot there, there for, yep. for that. Um, yep. I, I don't know what this is, but i got to talk about the, the cover art, which nobody can see, but they can look up on their own time. Narita Boy? Yeah. Narita boy, I don't know. Um, either they ripped off Star Wars or Star Wars ripped them off. I don't know how old that game is. Probably not old. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But it's like that's straight up Star Wars. Yeah, that's straight up Luke Skywalker stance on one of those original posters. Yeah, but that's probably a play on that <clears throat> intentionally. Yeah, it probably it could be paying homage to it. Um, Empire of Sin. I don't know anything about that. Um, I mean, this is kind of cool. I mean, you got to play it in VR. 
but uh, Star Wars Squadrons is coming. Um, I mean, it's worth a play if you just want to try it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun, fun flight simulator. Uh, I'm going to skip that one because that's what's <laughs> blowing my brain. Uh, Genesis Noir sounds cool. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't even know what it's near. Name. Near Autonoma. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Um, that's I. That's Sorry the one that butchered that. Yeah, that's the one that I think won a bunch of awards for soundtrack the one year. Oh, okay. I, I remember yeah. that name for that. A game can win. A game can have a really great soundtrack and stick yeah. in your memory forever. Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh yeah, no, I, I wasn't knocking it for that. I'm just gameplay that's on the my first memory. one. And Bud can attest to this. <laughs> uh, well, I don't. He never played the first one, but the game, like the gameplay on the the second one, is so well refined from where the first one was mm-hmm. that it's just I would I'd never want to go back and play the first one again. Oh, okay, like that's how I still have to venture. It There's so much for me to, to oh yeah to touch. Um, Torchlight three. Um, these look like cool games. I don't think. It's just one of those things I'll probably never play just it's because. PC game pass, yeah, you know. So, um, I just realized the bottom is mostly all PC. Um, I, I and I haven't been specifying. That's okay. Dead Fire Ultimate Edition. Okay, Matt. <laughs> um, Superland. That looks weird. The cover art looks yeah, <laughs> super weird. It's like Gumby, Red Gumby you with. Uh, Gumby. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. I don't know if we're even swearing on the show, but holy crap, I'll, I'll hold it back. <laughs> Octopath Traveler is coming to PC oh, and gosh, console. Game. Awesome! Holy crap! Yeah. So I'm um, so glad that I have not repurchased this because I've been thinking about it for over a year. It's so good. It's it's such a good game, and you could you could take a whole different path the the second time through or whatever granted you're you're still on a linear path and the stories aren't yeah branching or anything like that but your game your game experience could be drastically different yeah forget how many different if you choose a different there's like era. so many different paths to yeah. to take eight. eight well i mean but aside from that like you don't even have to go after the same second character oh yeah that's right like, it's not I linear mean, there's yeah. there's multiple yep. um different ways to go so I started. I might play it again. Mm-hmm. Um, my first time. Who was the Who was the mage character that was like incredibly overpowered? I don't know. I went Cyrus, up after I think the, his name is the the red the dancer girl. Okay, I forget her name. Yeah. So I just I blasted through like pretty much all of the game. Yeah. See, I, I didn't even get very far, but he was always in my party. Yeah. He, because he was so powerful, I couldn't take him out of it. Hmm. Like, but. Going back and, and revisiting that game might be something I do as well. Yeah. Um, could you imagine all those 8-bit graphics loading even faster on your Xbox Series X? Well, I know. That's what I'm thinking <laughs> about. I'm like, can it look any better? Right. <laughs> I mean, it was only on the I Switch played on that I played it. So. Right. So, and then closing out um, all the additions to, uh, to Game Pass this week, um, we have EA Play finally getting oh. added to PC Game on Pass. PC. And if you're not, um, if you're not a PC Game Pass person, like you're just getting console or whatever, you're not subscribed to Ultimate, and you don't go back and forth, mm-hmm. um, you're missing out on a good chunk of games because uh, there's some stuff that's exclusive in EA Play on PC. Oh. Like all of the Star Wars games are in there, all of the EA Star Wars games, oh, the yeah, original PC. Battlefront, the original Battlefront oh. Two, um, Knights of the Old Republic, I believe, is in there. Um, um, I know that the pod racing game is in there, so that's one of those games that you can hop in and download. That's what I'm doing later. Um, there's Sim City games on the EA side that oh, aren't really? available on console. Yeah, I think there's three Sim City. I honestly, in there. to be completely upfront about it, since I've gotten the Series X, I, I basically I've un- I've no Xbox. Games. games installed so on what's my neat, PC. Uh, what's neat about some of the Xbox, um, the the first party titles specifically, is the ability to do your Xbox Play anywhere and go back and forth. Yeah. So like I I kind of have both in- versions once in a while, like Master Chief Collection. Yeah. I have installed on both the PC and the uh, the console just in case I'm not playing on the TV or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, disappointed, but it's getting cross save later. The Minecraft Dungeons does not have mm-hmm. cross save. Yeah. It's coming later, hopefully with the next DLC, mm-hmm. but which will probably be in like two, three months. But 
the uh, it does not have cross save, and it's right around that time period that Windows or that Xbox implemented that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, a lot of your games, your first party Xbox titles, will go back and forth with your saves. It's really neat. Mm-hmm. So. So speaking of EA Play, our first game that we have discovered. That was or, a good closer. Or, huh? That was a good. That was a good segue. Yes. Yes. I. I didn't, you totally did I didn't write that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, the first first game that we decided on uh, is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, released November 15th, 2019. Holy crap, has it been that long? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was developed by Respawn. They also made the Titanfall series, Apex Legends, uh, Medal of Honor and Above and Beyond which is apparently a PC title thanks Shill because I have no idea what that is yeah and <laughs> and published by EA um, yeah I mean I've been a fan of, of everything EA has done with the Star Wars uh, that's true things you were a Battlefront fan when Ooh. nobody else was yeah well specifically Battlefront the first first in i don't know what year 2015 i think 14 yeah i forget but um that didn't really have a bad rep other than the fact that it was too much money and not enough content like there wasn't Mm -hmm. a story mode uh it was all multiplayer yeah it was specifically multiplayer it became free later so i didn't know that yeah um or maybe it was part of the xbox live it might have been game, game or whatever. Or yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, I've been a fan ever since, even through the the second game, which I don't understand why people hate on that. Like, why does it get the backlash for it was the micro? But like, why? There's other stuff. Cod yeah. had microtransactions. Yeah. Why are Why are we not canceling Cod? You yeah. know, we're in the cancels, you know, society. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, we're here to talk about Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, this is a fantastic game. I I guess I'll read you the synopsis because I pulled that up. Uh, so Fallen Order takes place five years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. The game follows Jedi Padawan uh, Cal Kestis, played by Cameron. I'm not gonna Mon Monaghan. I think that's right. Monaghan. Monaghan. I think um, that's right. As he's being hunted by the second sister and her partner, the ninth sister, both trained by Sith Lord Darth Vader, as part of the Imperial Inquisitor's program. Supporting characters include Cal's friends, uh, a, a scrapping partner. I don't even know how you say this. Pro- prof? Is, is I don't even know. I don't remember. Um, and then. Oh yeah, the guy at the very beginning. No, no, the the um, the the little multi-armed guy that flies the ship. Breeze, Breeze. Oh, okay, maybe that maybe it is talking about the other guy. But yeah, the very very beginning. Oh yeah, was a scrapper. Sc- that was the scrapper. At the Scrap. Beginning. Yeah, scrapping partner. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, you know, later to go on with uh, a Jedi Knight turned mercenary, uh, Seer Junda. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously agrees as we talked about um, and we later befriend a droid called BD-1 love it, loved him loved BD-1 him the, whole through, the whole way through I tell you what, Star Wars as a whole not to turn this into a Star Wars um, specific <laughs> podcast but Star Wars has done a really great job of like those kinds of side characters yes I agree specifically BB-8 Yep. In in the trilogy, the new trilogy, um, I I get crap for it, but I love porgs. I think they're adorable. The little ah ah. Oh, the, yeah. The okay. thing that Chewie tries to eat, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kind of becomes, it, it gets a heart and doesn't yeah. eat him, <laughs> even though one's already fried up and dead. Yeah. But um. Uh, but BD One is right in there with him, like he. Yeah. Oh, you forgot to mention the guy in um, Rogue One. I forget his name. The Imperial drone that's turned good. Oh, the yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know his name. Damn it! It was right there. Yeah, it's fine. Um, K two S O. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, 
they've they've been doing that great with with droids and, and little side characters. Um, and BD, he's basically a dog. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think the developers had said that they they based his animations on like a dog and stuff. Um, so yeah, for a, a a piece of metal with legs, like he's just for a lack of a better term, adorable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but what are you? Some of your first impressions with this game? What do you? What did you immediately take away from it? You know when people think of this game they automatically this is the if uncharted and um dark souls that's true had a baby had conceived a baby um however it just it's more than that because it has a metroidvania type of feel to it of course because of the it's it's somewhat of a linear game but not necessarily because again when you are advancing um you know through the game you obviously based on acquiring new powers you can go back and gain access to places that you couldn't before uh initial thoughts on this game is for one of just how beautiful the game is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think it is that game um that is one of the few games where it's challenging like but you don't want to quit right it's that challenging of a game where yeah you might have to put the controller down for a second you know for a few minutes maybe grab yourself another water or you know grab yourself a pepsi or something but you can come back to it Uh, I love that about this game. I love that it's so challenging. Uh, There is a learning curve. I Mm -hmm. love the the, just the combat system in itself. So the story overall, I think, is very well done. So let's talk combat, okay? (laughs) So um, because that's where my first impressions are, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a Dark Souls guy, right? I don't like I don't want something that's so challenging that punishes me so heavily for not doing something right that it's like you know it's a, it's a slog right i don't want to feel like that at all yeah you know something like celeste comes to mind where it's like it's incredibly difficult but you instantaneously know what you did wrong right right because it, it it's a one page puzzle right exactly yeah, yeah. so you kind of already know where you went wrong yeah um that to me is kind of how jedi fallen order feels in the combat right it's like you yeah. kind of realize, oh, I didn't block fast enough, yeah. or I should have dodged that attack when he turned red. Well, yeah, or... basically you gotta you gotta uh, map out what their attacks are. They or have s- patterns, right, or something you know yeah. to that extent. So, and their you know archetypes kind of fight similarly and whatever. You kind of learn that as it goes on. Um, one thing that I will say is that you two were a little bit luckier than me when you guys played it. Maybe mm. not, Mike. You played it initially on your PC, right? Like the first time you played it? No, the first time I played it was on PS4 Pro. Uh, no, it was Siri uh, One X. Cause One X. Be, yeah. Okay. So I started. But it wasn't this game. enhanced at that time. Oh, okay, okay. I started this game at um, on my Series One S. Right. I'm sorry, Series. My Xbox One S. I hate these names. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> my Xbox One S. Yeah. So. Um, I was locked at a 30 FPS, mm-hmm. uh, 1080p experience for this game. So I'm trying to learn it and, and get um, get familiar with the combat and stuff like that. And then this is the first title I played on my Series X when I had purchased it. And within that those first couple days, it had gotten its it already had its Xbox One X enhancement. Mm. Um, foolishly, I didn't know that, and I was still playing it at 30 FPS. Oh, God. <laughs> but at 4K. Yeah, oh, okay, um, okay. But, so, they updated it for the Series X, they optimized it, and it got its um, 1440 60 FPS mode. And I immediately turned that on, and it was like night and day with the combat. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you can see the frames so much more fluidly, and how to play the game at the higher frame rate, and it made it feel like I was, like, just those split-second reactions. I was hitting the timing much, much better whenever I did that. 
and that's my whole impression of the game after <laughs> after i you know after i did that probably i think on the second or third world yeah right like because i've gone through almost half the game with 30 fps yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, i switch over and i'm like wow this is this is night and day difference it's so much better so i i remember because you played this kind of before this was even an idea that we were going to do yeah, right um which I guess is what kind of led us to pick mm-hmm. this game, um, but I had I had started, <laughs> I got it on a deal on Steam for twenty three dollars, and I was like, all right, I'll buy it for twenty three dollars. Mm-hmm. It's a great game, which I'm still not mad about. Like, yeah, other than the fact that I pretty fastly got that, but it also almost immediately was coming to EA Play on Game Pass. Yeah, it was pretty close to that time as well. Um, but anyway, so I I started this game twice pretty within a pretty yeah. close time of each other. But um, I didn't beat it in this playthrough, but I mean, I have beaten it. Yeah. I, I beat yeah. it with initial release. So um, since, you know, since we've all made it through um, and I think that this goes without saying we're gonna we're gonna dive into spoiler territory oh, yeah. if you've been listening long yeah. enough and you want to play jedi fallen order um i advise you because seriously yeah download that game right now yeah uh no matter where where you do it if you're on pc it's in game pass obviously or mm-hmm. xbox game pass buy it on playstation just do it yeah um but yeah. i want to talk about uh the hardest fight we had right since that we're since we're talking combat. Which, i mean yeah, there's a reason it's the hardest fight because. Well, it's in. I'm not talking about the impossible fight. Oh, right? okay, okay, like, okay, okay. I'm not talking about the impossible fight. Okay, I thought that's where um, you're going. But what what specifically, um, for me, I think about the one like the second sister, the final encounter, was very very difficult. But I think you had to be incredibly precise, and I was just not. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't chalk that up to difficulty. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I, the when when you're in the trees and mm-hmm. you're interacting with that giant bird, yeah, and the her name is it the ninth sister shows up, yeah, the or big the seven. Uh, I think it's the ninth sister. The the I don't know what they're called. They probably have a species name. Yeah, right. Um, but she's not human. Right. Yeah. That fight. That was a difficult fight. I was so stuck there. Yeah. Because it's just as you're kind of learning, like, some more buff powers. Yeah. Right? And you don't know how to use them or whatever. I, you know? I, I was I was stuck on that fight specifically longer than I was stuck on the second sister at the end of the game. Hmm. I, um, I don't remember the mechanics of that fight, but I do remember, Yeah. you know, it, it, it kept me at that point for quite a while yeah what about you guys bud you're muted bud you're muted bud <laughs> he doesn't know what happened nope you're muted bud go ahead mike while bud figures out his situation we'll take a look on here okay <laughs> um god it wouldn't be a zoom call without a you know <laughs> like hey you're talking but you're muted <laughs> 2021, um, everybody. For me, it was actually the fourth uh, sister, the big Balkan one um, yeah. in the nest. Yeah, that's yeah, the one we're talking about. Yeah, I guess I yeah. was wrong. I guess I was wrong about the number. I don't know. Yeah, the, the ninth sister is the other one um, known as Sideri. Okay. Yeah. I believe her name was. Um, she's the ninth sister. The fourth is the big bulky one. And in the tree. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. Um, I died many times. Yeah. Yep. I just, I think for some reason my parry was, for one, I initially went in, um, you know, uh, not wa- like not walking the talk, which what I mean is uh, going into a game like this, I learned very quick that, uh, when it comes to meeting a new enemy, you kind of want to find out and decipher what are their movements, what are yeah. their attacks like. Um, you know, you kind of want to go in cautiously and you want to dodge, obviously, at the right time. And you don't want to overdo that, of course, even. Uh, but 
you also want to find that balance of pairing. And me, I was just going in and I would find myself in moments where um, I was just like, okay, bloodthirst. I'm just mm-hmm. going to go start whacking in, start getting some yeah. heavy hits. And then right as that would happen, mm-hmm. that's Mike's when showing me a picture of the ninth sister. That's the one we're all talking about up, the same one. She would kind of change up her chemistry on what she was going to do then um, in terms of the dynamics of her movement or her attacks became more. Mm-hmm. And I just found myself, I was my own worst enemy, pretty much. Yeah, same. Yeah. Right? Because, but I also felt part of it was that sometimes her attacks weren't predictable. Yeah. Right? Like, I yeah. feel like she, she would set up uh, two attacks the same way. So you, you would prepare for one or the like one or the other yeah. and like you would oh I'm, I, this is the one I have to dodge where she throws her sword mm. and I've got to move out of the way really quick she, uh, was she the one that had um, basically it was the handle in the center and it could spin yes yeah okay. I think so yeah yeah so um, yeah you know that it was a, it was a tough it was a tough game but it wasn't like unfair yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it wasn't... Well, here, it here's the thing. I mean, it's all based on what difficulty you picked. Right. That's true. If you play this game on story mode, like, this is a cakewalk. You know? Yeah. Like, you, you could drop it down to the story mode, and you wouldn't have any of the difficulty. And I would I would recommend people, like, if they want to experience the story, the very good Star Wars story that's yes. here, Yeah. but they don't want a challenge, they just want to casually play through it, absolutely do that. And that's what I did for the initial... Yeah. Release. I, I just wanted to get through it. Yeah. I still had trouble at times because I'm not good yeah. at those types I feel of like games. I did a I feel like I did at least one fight on story. Oh yeah, probably. I don't even know. It, I, it's whatever, I don't care. Do you guys have a favorite uh like puzzle or favorite environment that that you had in the game? I really liked the um um the like dark Sith planet. Yeah. The late late game. Mm-hmm. Um, Dathomir. Dathomir. I really enjoyed Dathomir a lot. It was probably my favorite. It might be just because it's fresh in my memory because that's where I left off on this ne- this current playthrough. Um, but the the wind portion on I, I don't remember what planet, but you had to put the 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 metal ball like you had to have it get blown around by the air. I yeah, don't, like all those puzzles with the that. wind puzzles. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I just, feel like that's on the second planet. Yeah, yeah it's, per, it's very early. Yeah, it's relatively. Um, I, I don't know why. I you just, like those puzzles? Yeah, I like those. I don't know. Yeah. They're time-consuming, but I had... It was fun to figure out the first time, mm-hmm. you know? Um, then and it I, feels I, Zelda, right? It feels yeah, oh, yeah, Zelda-esque very, yeah. when you're doing it the second time. Very much like, so, yes. Oh, yeah, I do remember how to do this, and oh, yeah, this is a good feeling to get this yeah. thing done. And it, Yeah. I hated those statues, though. Right, the ones that had the the big things in their chest, and they would shoot. Oh, the ones that come to life. Yeah, yeah. I hated those things. I've never. I don't remember ever having any difficulty. You could knock their. um, Yeah, you you just force force a hole, I think, or pull the thing out of their chest, and then they would just sit there. But yeah, you had to time it right, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't good at timing it right. Yeah. What about you, bud? Favorite area Uh, or environment? I I might be wrong on this, so. just so that we have everything straight, uh, Grease was the captain, the forearm dude on the mm-hmm. ship. Right. Broth was your friend back on Broca, the right. uh, wreckage yard. Yeah. Um, but if I'm right about this planet, my like favorite planet, my favorite environment, if I'm correct on it, it's the ice and water one. It's the uh, where you make your lightsaber. Is, I think yeah it's the well okay so that that is oh what is that that is I have to look that up Mike's looking, but no Mike's there was it. one where it was like the second planet I think it was Kashyyyk where like mm-hmm. it's where it introduced you into uh, the sliding mechanic mm-hmm. like uh, you know sli- like sliding down ice and all this kind of stuff and hitting off ice ramps and grabbing onto um vines and stuff but uh when it came to the holocron it that was on i think it says honestly i can't even know but that in itself was awesome and that's where i'm going to with my favorite puzzle 
So where you go um, to uh, get your saber crystal? Yeah. Um, after after obviously the first one breaks, that when you're in the vault or when you're there and you're going into the vault and there's that big huge dangling crystal mm -hmm. and then the light that's penetrating it and how you have to multiple multiple times you have to attach different we'll call them different plugs or cords i forgot about that one yeah, yeah that was a lot of fun to, you have to uh attach it to this swindle mechanism mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. use the force, force. Push it. Yep. yeah yeah and what it does is it tugs and pulls the crystal just right so that when the light penetrates it it concentrates it and magnifies it and melts the a, a closed off area that's embedded covered in ice that was probably my favorite one honestly so i would say overall like in this game i really liked the ice and snow environments i found it beautiful yeah and of course it just uh provided uh yep. more game mechanics into the levels yep i agree um i believe it's pronounced i am i don't know it's two eyes U M. Okay. I am. yeah solid so um it's a closing thoughts on the game right yeah um like how shocked were you guys major spoiler alert yeah i mean major spoiler alert. i i, I assume you kept we with us but major spoiler alert yeah holy shit when darth vader shows up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like yeah. yeah it's um it's not my it's not the at the time it was um it was a very holy shit moment um mm -hmm. but but not in the sense where i felt the intimidation of darth vader right it was i was did not expect it that's I, what it was. i wasn't expecting it either it's like a, it's it's very much a surprise and i don't even mean to to compare it to my experience i played um oh my god what's there's a vr star wars i forget what it's called um but like the opening moments of that, mm -hmm. you're you're captured, and Darth Vader comes to like interrogate oh, you. Okay, and and it goes. I mean, it goes relatively to your relative to your height. Mm -hmm. I'm six foot. I have to look up at Darth Vader. Yeah, right. You know, he's about six six, six seven or something. Yeah. Um. So I mean, that's the most intimidating experience I had with Darth yeah. Vader, but. I guess that's neither here nor there, but yeah. I wanted to I was just shocked. I yeah. at no point did they hint that like anything I mean, major with the Empire was gonna yeah. happen, right? Other than the interactions with the second sister. Um had one of the best kept secrets in games. Mm -hmm. Like nobody talks about it. Yeah. It was yep. spoiled it was spoiled for me. You know what? Okay. I forgot about that. It was spoiled to, for me because YouTubers can't you know, not be. So yeah, I guess I didn't watch any. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I follow all kinds of channels yeah, on mine. Um, but yeah, I mean, so put them in a thumbnail. So that was that was a holy shit moment. I yeah. just didn't expect it. I didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. Um, the Star Wars fan in me is uh, excited for the EA contract to end, and for us to finally. It's move. not so much ending now. It's just that they're they're now letting other people branch out branch out like ea is still making right games it's an it was an exclusivity contract yeah it just they're allowing other people to make yeah them. now it's been re renegotiated um, i believe i'm just excited for the possibilities of not having to lean on the star the skywalker characters anymore yeah yeah uh i mean this worked yes it did I agree. other cool. other than i i found myself at the end i'm just like okay so now it so like the, for, the force, the, the force unleashed is is not canon at all. Right. This is now canon. So, so now you're telling me that aside from Luke Skywalker, because we're not that far from Luke Skywalker, five years after the Empire. Right? I mean, we How got about another Luke? ten years. Yeah. He was like sixteen, seventeen, or something. Okay. Um, so we got another maybe tenish years in between Fallen yeah. Order and. A new hope um don't quote me on that I, that's just quick math in my head um but like you know 
if Darth Vader's still fighting uh, Force users, mm. like, how special was Luke then in the end? Right. There was a connection with his with his Well, I know, dad, yeah, he's his, his son know. and everything, right. but, like, uh, was there still people out there that don't know that, so that's fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Like, I just, I don't know how much we can pack in to that right. time. Well, that's that leans into um, hopes for a sequel, right, mm-hmm. to this game. I, you know, Respawn has confirmed that they're working on one. Yes. Um, I don't think we needed one. I don't think so either. Other like, than the cliffhanger, which... It's, is it a cliffhanger? Because he's like, no, nobody's going to find these Jedi children. Oh, right, children. he smashes them. He smashes bit, yeah. the holocron. Okay, yeah. So, like, nobody's going to find this. Yeah, no, that was the perfect end then. Yeah, I didn't need think it, it needed. No. I didn't think it needed a sequel, but I mean, if, Again, if not we're to gonna get one more Star Wars stuff, like to to add on to what I was saying, like if if there is a sequel, you know, it'll probably be a year, two years after the the first the game. Of this, yeah. Um, get aside from that, closer to that timeline. we're also yeah, we're also in canon getting the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Yep. Or mini series, it's like a six episode thing, um, which also takes place. I think Luke is like five or six or something. Right, they're, they're speculating. I don't think it's really known, or maybe he's around ten. So it's like five, six years before New Hope. It's like, can we can we go away from this? Right, you know. Right, I feel you. Like, I feel you. Let's not, start not telling be better stories, like ancient Sith stories versus the Jedi. You know, there's yeah. all this. There's this. There's a reason ever expanding. Knights of the Old Republic is so regarded as so good, right? Because it's so far removed. Yeah, it's from thing. the from the the movie franchise. If anything, if they if they still want to be slightly connected, give us something that's like 15, 20 years from Episode Nine. Right. You know. Right. Move it like forward, forward even more. Yeah. 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 I feel you. I feel you. What about you, bud? Any hopes or thoughts on a sequel? Um, I mean, let me just first say that uh, overall uh, with this game, uh, very pleased. Gameplay, awesome. Graphically, awesome. Uh, the Cal character, I mean, come to think, again, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, and I know there's a lot of people out there that can probably correct us on some of the things that we even said about Star Wars. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Uh, probably. Um, without a doubt in my mind. But they really captured and made Cal they made me believe that he is one of the strongest Jedi um, out there. And Yeah, we took on Darth yeah. Vader. I mean, How's he gotta took... die? He's gotta die. Wait, well, yeah. yeah. So, so like Asaka, they say, and which she's from like the uh, Star Wars Rebel series, yeah. and Luke, because of how young they were, um, they're like one of the strongest Jedi's because of how they mastered at such a young age, and that's the same thing for Cal. But what's so great too is not only do we get this awesome hero story of Cal, and again. Um, he in the beginning is so afraid to pursue that journey to pursue that yeah. path into becoming a jedi and actually following through on finding this holocron with these rebels you know uh such as seer and grease um because of what happened in his past with his master and him feeling like that was on him and that he, he's afraid to fail again but whenever he even comes out of that you have this this awesome hero story but you have such an awesome supportive cast like some of the characters dude um i agree like mirin the sorceress from dathomir yes. who was so just you know um just very persistent on not wanting cal there because of what the jedi had supposedly done to her people. Turns out he was a Sith. Yeah. 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 You know, and slaughtered. So just that dynamic, man. And then yeah. with that, uh, then she goes on to great, call. give some great comedic relief. Oh yes. To the story. Yes. Even just that little, that, that closing measure of the story. She's, she was so good. I, I forget yeah. what some of it was, but it was hilarious. 
and then like Sork Tormo, the mysterious cloaked man on Dathomir that you find who used to be a Jedi. Yep. He basically fled when the whole purge happened, and then dude, this is nuts. I've never heard of this, and I'm sure there's Jedi fanboys like you know, or I mean big Star Wars fanboys out there mm-hmm. that, you know, have you know, they've probably already read up on something like this. But the fact that this guy who also is like with the force and obviously he's more so went the route of a Sith. Not only does he delve with the force, but he also lingers into sorcery. So now you have this guy who lingers on these different things and you battling him when Mirren then finally, you know, trusts you and gets in on that dude. I just love the dynamic. And then with Darth Vader at the end, of course, like the thing I love about video games especially this game compared to the films is that we actually got to see how powerful the force can be the fact right that... i don't think it translates as well in a movie format because you no, there's this weird don't... feeling yeah. aspect with controllers right like that that rumble feel yeah. um yeah. you know and the visuals that are taking place at the same time like it's it's definitely the force has always been a good thing uh um it has always been uh, portrayed well in video games. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let me let, let me just say that if they never show if if you would just show people like of uh, just the mangling of the bridge and all the metal and just everything being twisted, these big huge metal structures and everything, and it never showed Darth Vader, people could swear that is Magneto there, like <laughs> like. Dude, it was nuts, and it was so captivating. It was great. Yep. Um, but in terms of a sequel, uh, I could possibly see. So going real quick, uh, when you finally get that holocron, mm-hmm. Mirren says something awesome because all the heroes in this are trying to get this holocron so that they can keep it out of the hands of the bad guys and so that they can find the next Jedi that are out there that are destined Jedi. And she says something along the lines of, well, what happens if, wouldn't it just be better if we just kept out of the hands of everybody? Like more so if we Mm -hmm. just destroyed it. Yeah. And then of course, in the end, spoiler, um, Cal makes the big decision to, again, as he's going through and he's starting to believe in himself, believe in the Force, he decides to fully believe in the Force and destroying the Holocron so that the Force can just have their way with the people out in the universe. Mm -hmm. Um, I honestly, like, where I see a possible sequel is, I see it still following Cal. Um, It's too soon to cut away from him. But... um, I think Darth Vader, if it does fit, since this is canon with the movies, if they can make it fit, Mm -hmm. um, others would probably know. I can see him possibly, maybe, reconstructuring uh, Sideri, maybe, um, perhaps, or just getting new people. But I would kind of like to see Sideri to be resurrected and be more made into a Frankenstein, just like, more more so just like Vader where she's mechanical um you know nothing with emotion but or just something that persists or and constantly comes after you across the galaxy mm-hmm. along with some more dynamic and actually more aggressive chase character. like a like a like a more aggressive mm-hmm. um hunt right like a yeah. more aggressive we're being hunted feel uh, would yeah. have to portray the second yeah, one because he's got to die because at that point... At, he's He's got to die. At the end of this... Like he has to, can that, canonically or well, however you say Well, not that. necessarily. Uh, not to get into Mando spoilers, because I know you haven't got there, and I respect to not spoil All things. Right, fair enough. Um, but, like, the whole um, original trilogy happened. Ahsoka wasn't there, okay. you know. But she is, in fact, alive. Because yeah. she shows up in and Mando. She's in Mando. I know that. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he. I mean, could he could go in hiding? I guess. That's fair. You know, if they maybe it could take place after the trilogy, after he learns that. You know, yeah. He goes into hiding, and yeah, there, there's a lot that he could. could you know, that'd we'll be a see. hell of a we'll sequel. That'd be a hell of a sequel. Let me pitch this. 
and uh, I'll see you guys if it's out there. Not really. Um, yeah. So, like you said, what if he goes into hiding after this game? Mm-hmm. The Luke stuff happens. I'm gonna and bring when, him out. And when, because Luke, about eight months after that or so, um, he goes around finding Jedi for the Academy. Mm-hmm. What if we get an Academy game, because that was a game at one point, where you were a person on in the Academy and like Luke was there in the game. What if we went that route and he comes back out of hiding? Like and they face off against the new evil. Yeah. Not Darth Vader again. Yeah. There's an endless amount of possibilities, yeah. man. We could do this all night. Yep. <laughs> um but yeah. I think uh, I'm excited for whatever yep. the um whatever the uh the sequel ends up being. And I am eager to uh, see what happens with these exclusivity Star Wars expanded games um, and go into different publishers. So a little, um, a little, whatever, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, On the spot discussion on what we're doing with the show, are we going to rate these? Because that's what we do with the movies. I give it a 8 out of 10. Bud? I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Oh, he's just got to go above. Always with the so always with the stepping up over shell. I didn't want <laughs> well, he, the price right. He, <laughs> he just hit you with a rock bottom, but I'm going to come in with a stunner and give it a 9. I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that. <laughs> I wouldn't argue like that. I, like, I think there are things that it could have done a little bit better. I think yep. customization could have been a little bit better. I mean, I'm going to go like out. I'm gonna... ponchos. They're all just stupid ponchos with different skins. Yeah. <laughs> I wish there was more custom custom. <laughs> you can't say it. No. <laughs> Custom- customizable. Cust- customizable outfits. Yes, lightsabers were cool. I think they did a good. That job. I mean, yep. that was super neat. Every time I come to a table, I got to change that sucker. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that was super neat. I yeah. agree. But yeah, that's a solid score. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going we, we to discuss yep. uh, what's next. Yep, live right on the air. Live right on the air? Yep. I, think, I have I something think... that's not on that list. All right. Because I think it'd be a hell of a good time. It uh, What spawned it in my brain to throw in the ether. I mean, you guys can throw in what you guys think or want. Um, mine goes with that backwards compatibility. But it also is on Game Pass. Brutal Legend. I haven't installed, actually. <laughs> I just haven't played it. Yep. Wow. That is a toss. I did not expect that one. I mean, I'm fine with it. I mean, I'm. you guys can throw something out there. I just, that's what popped into my I'm head. I'm indifferent. I'll play whatever. What's in your, what's in your uh, arena over there, bud? Well, I know there's all there's already been a lot of Destiny to talk. Yeah, you know, um, you know. First, I was thinking State of Decay two because it is a game that I absolutely love. It's a game that we've all yeah, into. I enjoy it too. Yeah, yeah, I like. It's it. gonna be an episode. I guarantee it. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll do Brutal Legend. All right. So I guess everyone can look forward to us within the next That's month it. doing a review oh, yeah. on Brutal Legend. Is That's one of my favorite games. Jack Black, right? Yeah, starring Jack Black. Among everybody else. All right. Wow. I'm not going to spoil it. anything because maybe you guys don't even know. So I'm I don't know gonna... anything about Exactly. I'm not going to say anything more. <laughs> there it is. Stay tuned. There it is, everybody. All right. Uh, thank you guys for stopping in to the first edition of this episode of a game show that is yet to uh, be named because I haven't, you know. Yeah, it's not important. Ide- ideas are <laughs> ideas are being thrown around. I don't know. We'll see when. Pulling back the curtain. When I upload this, we'll see what it says. I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you guys for, for stopping in. Uh, leave a, a like. Uh, you know, subscribe, all that stuff. I, I'm terrible at that. I don't know how like, people... Like, subscribe, follow our channel. Yeah. Hit the Instagram, follow the Twitters. 
Yeah. All the things. They're going to be listed in the yes. in the thing that you click to get here. Yes, it's it's all in the yeah. description. Look down there. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Goodbye. <laughs>